Hi there, my name is Joshua Brown from the interview training company, howtobecome.com. And in this presentation, I will teach you how to pass a higher executive officer interview. So if you have a job interview coming up for any HEO role whatsoever, please make sure you watch this video from start to finish because I am going to help you to succeed. To achieve that goal, here is what I will cover during this tutorial. I will give you a list of HEO interview questions I strongly recommend you prepare for. I will also provide you with example high scoring answers to those questions that will help you to succeed. I will also make sure to give you some essential tips for passing your HEO interview before finally telling you how you can download further resources including all of the answers to help you to prepare. And just very quickly, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I want to help you to pass your interview and I can only do that if you're subscribed. And please don't forget to hit that like button because that tells me you find these tutorials useful and it motivates me to keep making more tutorials like these. Okay, let's get started with the first HEO interview question I recommend that you prepare for and that is, tell me about yourself and why you think you could excel in a HEO position. So a really powerful tip for this first higher executive officer civil service interview question is that this is your opportunity to talk about the skills and qualities that you have, your passion for working in the public sector and how you're going to add value to the civil service in the role. Remember, you must demonstrate the civil service behaviours to that higher executive officer grade throughout your answers during the interview, not just this question, but all of the questions. So let's take a look at a great example answer to help you. Tell me about yourself and why you think you could excel in a higher executive officer position. Here we go. Thank you for inviting me to be interviewed for this higher executive officer position today. Throughout my career, I have developed a variety of transferable skills and leadership qualities that I believe will enable me to excel within the civil service as a HEO. I'm a highly positive and effective manager who has excellent analytical and project management skills which will help me to ensure work is published to the high standards expected of the civil service. For example, in my previous role, I was praised by my senior manager for analysing the department's budget spending and for proposing new ways to save on the budget. I had to communicate this data to external stakeholders and encourage others to embrace change within the organisation, which, in turn, had a successful impact on the department. I understand as a HEO, I'll be responsible for leading a team to create and implement new policies. I will need to communicate with clarity, to see the bigger picture and to approach tasks and projects with enthusiasm and a commitment to public service. Outside of work, I'm driven by my family who are fully supportive of my career and I enjoy hobbies such as team-based sports where I get to collaborate with others. If you employ me in this position, I will be a proactive and positive leader, not afraid to encourage and implement continuous improvement within workflows. I am someone who will always seek to identify where I can improve processes for future success. Now that's a really powerful opening answer to that question, tell me about yourself and why you think you could excel in a HEO position. You'll notice throughout that answer that I demonstrated that I fully understood many of what the core civil service behaviours were needed specifically for this role. And really importantly, I also demonstrated examples of where I had demonstrated those previously. So let's take a look at the next civil service HEO interview question, which is describe a time where you have felt. Now, it's really important how you answer this civil service behavioural interview question. Because if you say you haven't failed before, then the hiring manager may take the view that you may not have the experience needed. We all make mistakes, therefore, you need to show that you've handled failure positively in the past and that you have learned from it. Higher executive officer roles require leadership and team management. Therefore, a good example is to use a team-based or management failure that you have made, which has made you, in turn, a better leader. So here's a great example answer to help you. Describe a time where you failed. In a previous role, I was part of a team that had been given a strict brief by a client. The project needed to be completed on a much tighter deadline than we were normally accustomed to. This meant that we didn't follow our normal procedure, which included our project manager finding ways to save time, and he decided to not have an early project follow-up call with the client to discuss the progress of the project. Not having this call turned out to be a fatal mistake as our project manager had misunderstood the brief which was handed down to us. This would have been spotted if we'd had that call. The client was clearly unhappy and abandoned the project. I was very embarrassed to be part of a team that had failed. 
However, I used this as a learning experience and it proved to be a valuable one that helped shape me for when I became a manager. I am now the type of person who ensures that briefs are thoroughly checked and I work with my team to put a transparent plan in place. I ensure a strong relationship is always formed with clients and external stakeholders and open communication is encouraged within my team. I hold regular team meetings to ensure projects are on track and if there are any issues, I take quick decisive action to ensure plans are put in place to tackle the problem. This is a really strong answer to that interview question, describe a time where you failed. Because not only have I admitted to a previous mistake in my work experience, I've demonstrated how I've learned from it and what steps I take now to make sure a failure like that can't happen again. I also demonstrated teamwork and collaboration and how I manage and show leadership skills, which is really important for any HEO role. The next interview question is, what skills and qualities are needed to carry out a higher executive officer position? This question is your opportunity to show that you have a strong understanding of the civil service behaviors at a HEO grade. Developing yourself and others, managing a quality service, communicating and influencing, delivering at pace, etc. These should all be demonstrated with examples or at least an understanding of their importance within your answer. So here's a great answer to help you. What skills and qualities are needed to carry out a higher executive officer position? Here we go. There are many skills and qualities needed to excel in a higher executive officer role. One of the most important ones is effective leadership skills, to be able to lead the department in the development and implementation of new policies and complete its objectives. I understand that it's pivotal to support and make positive change within the organization. I am someone who can maximize the potential in others and the resources at my disposal, which I believe is important for a HEO, as this role requires someone that must be supportive throughout challenging times and who seeks to empower people to deliver important projects using an innovative and forward-thinking approach to problem solving. As a HEO, you're expected to be a positive role model to all and integrity is also very important and you must always set high standards for everyone to follow. Other skills and qualities include being able to communicate and collaborate effectively with other internal departments and external stakeholders who may have a vested interest in the civil service. Finally, being able to multitask and manage multiple challenging projects and budgets concurrently is a vital skill of a competent civil service higher executive officer. Now that's a really powerful answer to that interview question. Now don't go anywhere as I still have more interview questions and answers to give you, but when you are ready, click that link in the top right hand corner. It will take you to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can download my 24 higher executive officer civil service interview questions and answers to give you the edge in your interview, including the ones that we're covering right now. Okay, here's the next question for you. Why do you want to work for the civil service? When answering this interview question, be sure to demonstrate a passion for serving the public and explain how you always strive to collaborate, lead and implement effective policies to achieve the civil services objectives. Let's take a look at a great answer to help you. Why do you want to work for the civil service? I want to work for the civil service for several reasons. Firstly, I find it particularly attractive that you encourage all employees to be the best versions of themselves in a supportive environment. I am a strong believer that for organizations to remain successful, grow and further develop, they need to embrace change, which the civil service has always done. It appeals to me that I'll be leading a team that will contribute to one of the organization's main objectives, positively helping the lives of others by delivering excellent service to the public. And I will get to see firsthand the positive impact from the projects and policies that I help to implement and I fully understand their importance. I enjoy the friendly working environment across departments and collaborating with others to achieve a common goal. Whether that be developing and leading my team, reporting to senior management or building strong relationships with key stakeholders both internally and externally. 
This answer ticks so many boxes to that interview question, why do you want to work for the civil service? It shows that you have an understanding of the civil service, what they're all about and what their objectives are, but it also shows that you understand the role and what is required from you within that role and it also puts you across in a positive light and someone who wants to carry out that role. Let's take a look at the next interview question, which is, when have you used effective communication skills to get a difficult message across to a group of people? That's a really tricky interview question. And my tip here is to answer this behavioral interview question, you need to assess the civil services communicating and influencing behavior to that HEO grade. You must demonstrate that you have an awareness of different communication approaches and that you're able to influence a team or department. A great example to use is one that also demonstrates that you see the bigger picture, which again is another civil service behavioral competency. So let's take a look at a great answer to this interview question. When have you used effective communication skills to get a difficult message across to a group of people? At a previous role, it was my responsibility to let the team know that there were going to be some challenging times ahead for the department and that each member of staff would need to take on new roles and responsibilities. I knew before delivering this information that this was going to be difficult as the news wouldn't be well received with some of the staff members. These changes were very much needed to help the organization through a challenging period and I knew I needed to win over the whole team. Before sitting down with the team, I considered my approach carefully. I am a believer in transparency and that everyone in the team has an equal part to play in the organization's success. I therefore openly explained the reasons for these changes, the benefits that they would have and how it was important for each member to embrace change positively. I also explained how everyone would have my support and the support of management to adjust to these changes. Although it was a difficult message, I was proud in the way that I delivered the message with clarity, purpose and confidence. I believe in doing so, not only did staff embrace the change, I was also able to gain further respect from my team. Now this answer really shows a strong leadership approach which the hiring manager is looking for in your answer. So the next thing to do is to please make sure that you click the button in the top right hand corner of this video right now Head through to my website, howtobecome.com, where you can download these slides and get access to 24 higher executive officer interview questions and high scoring answers to each question in a PDF guide. You can literally have access to all of these civil service HEO behavioral interview questions and answers and the slides in your inbox within two minutes from now. And it's guaranteed to help you prepare effectively for your interview and more importantly, put you ahead of the competition. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as I'm on a mission to help as many people as possible to pass their job interviews and I can only do that if you're subscribed. Please don't forget to also hit that like button as well because this encourages me to make more videos like these. If you have any questions regarding to the HEO or civil service interviews, please feel free to put these in the comment section below where I will get back to you. And finally, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below. It's always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best for your interview. Have a great day.